In this wiki article about prehistoric Europe, a small paragraph regarding Upper Paleolithic era is the starting point. It acted as the trigger of this video, where a theory is presented of how Homo sapiens arrived in Europe. Homo sapiens arrived in Europe around 45,000 and 43,000 years ago via the Levant and entered the continent through the Danubian Corridor, as the fossils at Pestera CUOA suggest. The fossil's genetic structure indicates a recent Neanderthal ancestry, and the discovery of a fragment of a skull in Israel in 2008 support the notion that humans interbred with Neanderthals in the Levant. The phrase Danubian Corridor is a key. At this point you might wonder, what key? The fact that Danube is a river, and a vast one. Almost from one part of Europe to the other. In fact the rivers Rhine, Loire, Seine and several other rivers in Spain are exit points to the Atlantic Ocean. But for this theory we will use a set of three rivers Danube, Rhine and Thames, as those rivers may have been parts of one larger river several thousands years ago. What could Danube provide as a corridor? A river can provide easily two things at that era, water and fish for food. Surely fishing means tools, but could Danube be also a corridor for transportation? That would mean that Homo sapiens had the ability to at least create simple boats or canoes from wood and animal skin. Imagine a Native American canoe at this point, or the 8,000-year-old Dudout canoe from Dafuna, as written in aspects of African archaeology. Time to add some more information. Apart from a Britannica article regarding Native American prehistory could help. Until the late 1980s, it was generally believed on the basis of evidence of the Clovis projectile points that had been found in New Mexico, that humans arrived in the Americas approximately 13,500 years ago. During the last ice age, a land bridge, a misnomer for a very broad swath of land, connected northeastern Asia to northwestern North America. The land route is known as Beringia because it formed along the present-day Bering Strait. Beringia began to emerge some 36,000 to 40,000 years ago, as the Ice Age began. At that time glaciers began to absorb increasing amounts of water, causing global sea levels to fall by as much as 400 feet, 120 meters. A complete connection between Asia and North America existed from about 28,000 to 10,000 BC, and, at its greatest extent, Beringia may have spanned some 1,000 miles from north to south. Now let's take a look at the Black Sea from above. This would enlighten your perception regarding the subject of this video. In this theory it is suggested that between 45,000 to 43,000 BC, the Black Sea was 500 meters lower, or even much more. Such a decrease of water levels could only mean massive glaciers towards the poles. If you actually take a closer look at this Google Earth image, you will see the current era, and the prehistoric delta of the river Danube at the seabed in deeper waters. There are parts of Danube or Dnieper that appear in the seafloor, and parts of other prehistoric rivers. Surely a river was there, but when is the actual question? This is how the Black Sea would look like, if waters were lowered by 500 meters. This image is based on a web tool called Flood Map. We know that the Black Sea was flooded. Floods are mentioned in several civilizations. Some of them are for the same event and some are not. There have been theories about that, for example the Black Sea Deluge Hypothesis. For our case we will borrow a piece of information from that wiki article. It involves the 2003 and 2007 ancient catastrophic flood scenario that was proposed by Andre Chepeliga for the late quaternary sea level rise of the Black Sea. The hypothesis for a late Pleistocene Great Flood argues that brackish Neo-Oxinian Lake, which occupied the Black Sea Basin, was rapidly inundated by glacial meltwater overflow from the Caspian Sea via the Manakerch Spillway shortly after the late glacial maximum, about 17,000 to 14,000 before present. There are numerous wiki articles to read about glacial period, the Milankovitch cycles, the last glacial period for your better understanding. Make sure to take a look at the links that are provided in the description of this video. There are many indications that a major climate event, or events happened 45,000 to 47,000 before present, that dropped the global temperature. 
We can see that the image presented in flood map matches the bathymetry and surrounding relief of the Black Sea. There is one more fact that we know about the Black Sea. Denser, more saline water from the Aegean flows into the Black Sea underneath the less dense, fresher outflowing water. This creates a significant and permanent layer of deep water that does not drain or mix and is therefore anoxic. This anoxic layer is responsible for the preservation of ancient shipwrecks which have been found in the Black Sea. Anoxic conditions result from several factors, for example, stagnation conditions, density stratification. Supplied by major rivers, principally the Danube, Dnieper, and Don the Black Sea anoxic layer could be a strong indication of stagnation. Now let us remember the transportation mean, the canoe. A corridor starting from the Black Sea, Danube, Rhine and Thames rivers can be used. And then we take a look at the Atlantic Ocean, lowered by 500 meters, and having in mind that glaciers would exist then also. This means that some of the ocean parts between these land stripes and islands could have been covered with a thick layer of ice. A passage to the American continent appears. The European continent now almost stretches up to Iceland. But there is something worth mentioned at this point. We actually know that the landscape, or the seabed, especially around Iceland, would not look the exact same as it is now, back then. Locations around volcanoes changed during periods of thousands of years. In a volcanic eruption new land is created. But in some cases there are more after effects. For example the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980, or the eruption of the volcano in Santorini Island in Greece, also known as the Minoan eruption, where the caldera collapsed under its own weight. That of course could only mean that the caldera would actually have been much larger in volume before the eruption. Such events could actually have been the cause of some of the floods or catastrophic events mentioned in historical records or myths. But since the time period is not millions of years, but 45,000 years ago, I really don't think that the overall geology of the location would have changed that much. So it is quite obvious that under certain conditions such a journey could happen. But what could drive a large number of people to other lands? The dates 45,000 BCE and 43,000 BCE is not an indication of a period of 2,000 years. We don't know the time span of the arrival of Homo sapiens to Europe, it may have been hundreds or thousands of years. It could only mean climate change or a series of catastrophic natural events at a certain geographic location or more that slowly drove the population away from that location to find some other. Since Homo sapiens interbred with Neanderthals, we can only assume that perhaps even other branches of humans could have existed at that era, which we are not aware of, and that Homo sapiens may have interbred with them also along the way to the European and perhaps the American continent also. What seems sure is that when living conditions are not the proper ones, people immigrate. This scenario is repeated over and over in this planet throughout history. Why would Homo sapiens choose a river corridor and not go to the exact opposite direction than the one proposed? That depends on the location that Homo sapiens evolved at the first place. Even if the Black Sea was a swamp back then, it is a far better pathway than desert or mountains if you can create boats. Ask yourself, would you climb a 5,000 or 8,000 meter mountain, or walk through desert easily if a better route is available. Understand that this position involves large groups of people. Of course there could have been groups that chose those paths that are more dangerous, but it is the minority in this case. The choice of following a river is the best solution, even if you don't have the ability to create small boats or canoes, you simply walk along the river bank. We do call them homo sapiens, for a reason. The reason is intelligence. The main difference between Neanderthal and Homo sapiens is that Neanderthals were hunter-gatherers whereas Homo sapiens spend a settled life producing food through agriculture and domestication. Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo sapiens idalsu are the two subspecies of Homo sapiens. The modern human belongs to Homo sapiens sapiens while the other is an extinct subspecies. Homo sapiens is called wise man or clever man in Latin. Making better decisions and having the ability to create tools is a key indicator of intelligence. 
Thank you for watching.